Welcome, welcome, one and all, to the inaugural episode of Bros and Boxers. I'm your host, Michael, here with Casey, my other host. So I, I have to start out by saying, like, there's a reason people get into podcasting. It's not because they're <laughs> models. Because they have a face for radio. It is because they have the voice and the face for radio. And in my case, it also includes a belly that's fatty. I don't know um, what voice you're doing, but it is not recognizable whatsoever. It, it's, not a, it's not any sort of voice. It's just a voice. Oh, okay. I'm just making sure you weren't impersonating somebody because it would just be right over my head and the head of our millions of viewers at home. Well, like I said, if we hit one million, right? One million first podcast. You know, we, when we were uh, prepping for the podcast here, which uh, I'll, I'll confess, the prep is uh, very, Minimal? very loose. There's, there's not much to it. But I was looking at current events, you know, and it seems like right now, if you just search current events and you're looking through different sites, it's just like terrible. Like there's, there's no like section like uplifting news. No, no, no. It's just like doom and gloom. And I don't know if that's just how it's always I, been. I think that's and just what your feed is showing you because no, mine doesn't there's always no give feed. me that. There's no feed. I'm just, I'm just, I went to Google, right? And I just clicked the news tab and I'm going to different news sources here. And it's well, just well, all think like. About it. Think about this, right? So Google and a bunch of the other social media platforms got dragged into the Senate, had to go through these long hearings where they were told that they were manipulating information, that they were directing people to either pro-Democrat or pro-Republican, or they were propagating misinformation. They were allowing dummy shadow accounts to exist. Like, all these platforms are now, like, on their best behavior. They have to walk this tightrope. And, unfortunately, Google's depressed, and so they're just going to feed up a bunch of... <laughs> Google. Google's like its own... It, it is a person. It's just like, why is everybody so mean to me? Honestly, they're one of the... One of the leaders of AI, right? So, how about this? Here, here's something. I just I scrolled down like four pages before I found this. Right, <laughs> the uh, the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild two. They're thinking, and and I don't I don't buy this for a minute. I'm gonna throw that out there right now because Breath of the Wild one was announced. When, well, let me just say first, they're saying it's gonna be holiday 2021, and it's not Nintendo saying that. It's just the rumor. But okay, when was rumor when mill. was Breath of the Wild? I mean, it came out when I think 2017. I have no idea. Yeah, March 3rd, 2017. But when was it announced? I think it was originally announced like four years. I remember seeing like the first E3 trailer where you see Link like jump up off the horse and he's, he's got yeah. an arrow and he's like, and it's just, it just like was like, oh man, it's so cool. I can't wait for this. And it was like years before, like it was supposed to come out shortly after that and they just kept pushing it back. Uh, yeah, look at E3 2014 is when it was, wow. uh, it looks like it was when it was first announced. Oh wait, no, no, no. Look at this. Hold on a second. Nintendo Direct January 2013 it was in a Wii U Nintendo Direct. So there's four years before the announcement and the actual release. So the fact that Breath of the Wild 2 could be done by the end of next year, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they do have the engine already. You know, they're building it off the first one. So they're going to do what they did with like uh, Twilight Princess. They release one game and then they just go back and reskin it and. Do I think another you're thinking one. of Ocarina and Majora's Mask. The Twilight go. Princess wasn't, wasn't really a reskin. I don't think it was. I could I be wrong. It was. I, don't no, remember. I, I think it may have been based off the engine, but, but uh, Ocarina came out on N64, and then they did Majora's Mask on N64 as well, and then Twilight Princess came out on GameCube and Wii. Let, let's just put this out there. Right now, with the release of the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, I detest those people that have gone and raided all the stores oh, man. to purchase... Not only these consoles, but then old consoles as well, and then jack the prices up for the holidays. I get it. Supply and demand. Capitalism's great. Woohoo. Yeah, but that's that's an exploit right there. I mean, that's not functional. I, I mean, the, what, could, the be, only what reason... could be more video gamer than exploiting the system? But okay. I know. But, but <laughs> you know, that is not sustainable. That's that's terrible, in, in my personal opinion. I'm, you're always going to have it to a degree, but that's it just, just seems terrible, like it's terrible, been... Terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. It just seems like it's been like... <laughs> that's like Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Dude, uh-huh. All my kids oh, watch boy. is Disney stuff. What do, you want, what do you want me to say? All right, that's what's in my brain. Oh, gosh. I, I don't even remember what, we're ta- what we were talking. Oh yeah, the scalpers. Come on, scalpers, don't, man. Don't sideline me like well, that. Well, so so like I would like to have a Nintendo Switch for holiday 2021, right? Or 2020. But at the same time, 
I need new tires for the three wheeler. I want an off road vehicle that can actually haul some gears and possibly the motorcycle as well. And I want a Harley V rod. And I don't know, man. Yeah, but all those things that you listed, I mean, other than the tires, I feel the like tires are like a hundred like, bucks for two. Yeah, everything else that, that you listed was like expensive. Like you're like, oh, I want to get a Nintendo Switch, but I also want to get a Harley. It's like, wait, what? Those aren't mutually exclusive. I mean, the, well, I, yes, yes, buying the Switch chips away at the Harley fund, but exactly. So does you know going out to eat once a week and that kind of thing. I, yeah, but that's that's kind of budgeted already. So like, uh, is, I'm is still gonna... making more money than when I was working at my last job, making thirteen dollars an hour. Now you make thirteen dollars is... an hour in one cent, right? Oh hell yeah, dude. Me, I'm over here thirteen dollars an hour in two cents, just to lord it over you. I just to lord it over you, like yeah, well, you're sitting down there on thirteen oh one, aren't you? You know, that's what ha- I feel like. That's what happens though a lot of times, like especially back like when we worked at uh, at Publix, which for those of you tuning in, that's grocery store in the southeast. But back who, when we worked there, who doesn't people... listen to a podcast from the beginning? Oh, let me just skip through to how many minutes <laughs> has it been now? Like ten minutes hey, into the podcast, maybe they, like... maybe they came in, you know, after a commercial break. You don't know. There's no, no way that we're gonna have like <laughs> there's anybody no way we're have any commercial breaks. Yeah, in the like there's no way on the first podcast that we're gonna get this. We have to be. I, I don't know. I'm following. Freddie Wong over at Dungeons and Daddies, and I absolutely love the product that they're putting out. So much so, I started listening to his other one, Screen Break, where, yeah, it's Screen Break. Yeah, um, if you want to hear some real podcasts. Those are definitely two fantastic ones I, I suggest. There are a few episodes of Screen Break I don't like. If you're listening to our garbage podcast, pause right now. Just, <laughs> just get rid of it. And you go pause over Pause and oh, leave. Wait a minute, I said pause right now before I gave the rest of the instructions. So they're just paused. Ooh. They're just sitting there. Like and it's in like a time warp, just like what's next? They're just they just like thousands of years from now, just a skeleton sitting at some <laughs> cubicle with with the headphones still over the shoulders from when they were in the years. And here we see a man instructed to pause with no further instructions. I'll come back to that. I I have a Netflix show everybody needs to watch, but with their podcast, they start out, and I don't think they really had any ads until fifty. Right about the 50 mark, then they went and retconned ads into all their podcasts. I know it's because I have no life, and I went back and listened to everything from the beginning, and now I'm caught up at, I think, what are they, 64 episodes now? Do they do actual ads, or do they do, they do the ads themselves? It It's a little column A, a little column B, but they are all inserted directly into the podcast. So peeling back the curtain here, you've got your audio recording, and then I guess you put little markers in, or you tell your software to just slap a pod the commercial into your podcast and then you're done. I think most most people, most editors and and not, I'm going to speak out of ignorance here because I am no editor, but I think most editors try to find a good break, you know, like oh, here's here's like a good, you know, end point in a conversation. If they're just going to inject like an ad randomly, I think that's how they'll do it. Like they'll try to find a break. I, a lot of times, you know, but the when when the presenter speaks it, they just say it out of nowhere like you know or well not out of nowhere but well that's definitely like the radio the radio way is to just kind of be like in the middle of conversation and be like you know have you ever heard of Belvita breakfast biscuits i love the blueberry <laughs> like this episode sponsored by Belvita breakfast biscuits i remember when uh one of my favorite radio personalities he started getting like really weird ads and one of them was Belvita and he enunciated the bees so that's because they don't want it to be confused with Velveeta. They don't want to be oh, okay. they don't want to be like, go get your Velveeta breakfast. Well and then uh he pronounced blueberry weird. So I don't know if you caught it. I said blueberry. Which is apparently a legitimate way to pronounce that. I think it's just like where you were raised. You know it's like I dated a girl who uh her mom said Warsh all the time. Oh God. People that say that gotta go bring the Warsh in Wash your face. It's like something with the where you have those vowels that take it's on like, a no, hard I'm R. Go wash my face, and then I'm going to go run down to the store. It, it's something. It's like it's like a real point of contention for you. You know, somebody's right. like, "Hey, Casey, so can you go wash?" You're like, "No." My my thing always is the uh, the pop thing. I say pop. Do you really? And I, I'm not a northerner either. I just I'll say I'm it fine with people saying soda, Coke, Pepsi. Say the well, Coke and Pepsi are drinking. brands. If you I mean, those go are around brands. saying pop. What? There's no difference between saying saying pop and soda. It's just two yeah, different words soda, for the same thing. Soda definitely allowable. Soda pop, I'll accept. But pop, mm-mm. 
Mm-mm. Nope, can't do it. So, so you'll take the it. con. You'll take the the uh, conjunction yep. there. You'll take the soda pop conjunction junction over here. I'll take but, that or the beginning of it, but not the latter. You know what that is? They they call that bigotry, Casey. Mm. That's that's you and your closed-minded thoughts mm. regarding regarding pop. So you know what? My I don't want listeners, you and your my in northern the listeners, conjunctions I coming around these parts to allow them to say pop. You know, Stanking I'm not... up my soda drinking. And furthermore, and furthermore, who are you? Who are you to say what can or can't be said? I can say whatever I want. And... Everybody tunes in for me. Our millions of viewers, you know what they message me? They all message me, one group. It's, it's one million people, all in one group. They come up with one thing to say to me whenever they message me. Every time they say, we only tune in for you. Well, I mean, that would be a real <laughs> interesting podcast to just hear you. Just, just one second. We take... We record it, both of us, but then we just cut out your audio channel. It's just me. Whenever you make a funny riff, it's just me laughing after some silence. I was just giving the audience a taste of it, just trying to be as quiet as possible. There, so. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say something. It's a lot harder than I thought. Well, you know, some people, like uh, Bill Burr, in fact, if you're listening to our podcast still, I need to pause right now and go over to Bill Burr. His podcast is so good, and he does it by he himself. Never listen. He wouldn't. He'd be like, what is this two idiots on the internet? What is this garbage right here? <laughs> yeah. You know, our, our podcast name should have just been two idiots on the internet. Oh, my God. We missed it. And then, oh, and then the subtext what? would just be, Bill Burr wouldn't listen to it. Why would you? And that's the whole thing. <laughs> that, Nobody ever that listens. That should just automatically be our tagline. Bill Burr would not listen to this. Bill Burr would not listen. You know what? That's going to be the whole campaign here. Try to get Bill Burr to tune in. Yeah, everybody at Bill Burr and say, at Bill Burr. You should listen Listen to... Listen. <laughs> you should listen, listen to... to oh, yeah, rest in peace. It's too soon. It's too oh, soon. Oh, Sean. I had one of my favorite actors, by the way. Him and Harrison Ford acted alongside each other in the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade movie. And I found out that Sean Connery passed because of a news article that said Harrison Ford shares his heartfelt sadness, remorse, whatever, at the passing of Sean Connery. And I was like, oh my God. That's the only celebrity that kind of brought me to tears. I was like, Did it really why am I upset about... I mean, like... I mean, he was I'm, an icon. I'm being over-exaggerated, but... I, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's it kind of sh- like, you're like, oh, man, it shakes you a little bit. He he was like the first Bond I ever watched. Well, yeah, as a, as a kid. Uh, you know what? Actually, I think Bro- uh, Pierce... Oh, man. It's Is it Brosnan? Brosnan? Yeah, it's Brosnan. All right, I'll just cut that out. <laughs> I don't think Sean Connery was. No, was we're the leaving first. that in. You have to have that in. Come on. Oh God. Oh God. But, oh God. But no, like Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Pierce Brosnan. These, these are a few of my favorite Bonds. Bonds. When the. <laughs> I, I don't know where that came from, but you know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean about like a celebrity hitting you, and you feel like you feel like a loser. Well, and I, I hear he was kind of a. He was kind of hard to work with. I mean, but that was that was that was the era, right? Boys will be boys. I mean, you. I mean, people people give it to their grandfathers and grandmothers all the time. Oh well, they're from a different era. So I mean, yeah, it's. But it's it's one of those things where, you know, you can say like, oh, that's why that was the way it was, but you can't say that's why it is the way it is. Like if you're. But was he doing that in 2020? Was he doing that in 2019? See, that's the thing. I don't know. Just an aside to all you uh, Connery lawyers, we have the utmost respect for Sir Sean Connery, the views, right? The views he was represented knighted, by right? the hosts do not reflect. <laughs> yeah. The, the statements by the hosts do not reflect the views of the hosts. But, um, oh, God. No, th- these are all, like, alleged statements. I haven't seen any proof of Let's go back to the original point, which is that, you know, these celebrity deaths can can hit you and and for me it was i remember robin williams back in uh, what was that 2014 i think he died but you when in that, 2014 when he, impactful year for you huh it was <laughs> i'm telling you man they announced breath of the wild and <laughs> yeah it was august 11 2014 when he passed away i was actually like you know like i can't believe it especially the way he went you know it was, didn't i thought he died in a in a Closet choking himself. Yeah, he died of uh, no, not of autoerotic asphyxiation. Who am I thinking of? Somebody. I don't died know who you're thinking of. No, Robin had. Um, hold on, let's see it. Oh, you know what's interesting? I'm, I just googled him to to make sure I got the facts here. 
And like one of the first questions is, did Robin Williams die of autoerotic asphyxiation? No, he had uh, Parkinson's, anxiety, depression, and paranoia. He had some form of depression, I want to say, where he, the mind starts to... Oh, here it is. Louis body disease. Let's check this out. Let's see what this is. I think it's like extreme form of dementia where you uh, basically like lose yourself. And oh, they were saying gotcha. that he wants to, you know, he wanted to end it when he still had some semblance of himself. So I can appreciate that. Let's see. Lewy body dementia is a disease associated with abnormal deposits of protein called alpha synuclein in the brain. These deposits called Lewy bodies affect chemicals in the brain whose changes in turn can lead to problems with thinking, movement, behavior, and mood. God, that is terrible. Like, can you think of a worse way to lose yourself? Well, I mean, I, I watched my grandfather basically lose lose his cognitive abilities, you know, sitting in the hospital thinking he was in a bank. Yeah, I mean, that's just, there's nothing worse, dude. I was reading something about, um, oh, man, I don't want to get it wrong. I, I want to say it's Norway. Yeah, that they, they have the they do like the uh, euthanasia. What? No. You know what I was thinking? I think I was thinking of the Netherlands. You know, they have some sort of euthanasia program for it. You know, people who are not doing too hot, basically. Are, are you thinking about China? They've got plenty of youth in Asia. Ooh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> youth in Asia. Oh, I thought you were saying, talking about their... No, youth in... Oh, my God, dude. She, that's why I said it was no, terrible. No, youth, Y-O-U-T-H, in, okay. A-I-S-I-A. Wait, <laughs> did I spell that right? That's <laughs> I not. don't think you did, but whatever. <laughs> I was I was still cringing at the thought of making a lighthearted joke over a tragedy. God, this this podcast is off to a terrible start. But if you're still listening, hot takes, hot takes right here. If uh, if we had cameras on us, we'd have a little side segment that dun, 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 the producers would tackle this already. No, no, the producers would be like, oh no, keep going, keep going. <laughs> no, the producers would be like, cut to NPR. Which if <laughs> you're still listening, NPR. if you're still listening, NPR, when, whenever you want to, just. They're right there no, on the internet. They won't hire us. They're not going to hire us. No, I'm talking about people should ditch us and go listen to NPR. Oh, gotcha. Let's get nerdy for a second. Oh, God. I want to talk this about... Is not, this is not your former podcast, Nerd Talk. I want to talk... Yeah. <laughs> you want to listen to a better podcast. If you're still listening, go check out Nerd Talk, which is, I think, all of three episodes. All right, so I know, I know you wanted to, to go on a tangent, but I, I do want to do that Netflix TV movie thing that I wanted to say. So the Netflix movie, Casey. Yeah, so I, I teased this earlier in the podcast, and if you have a chance to, a subscription to, and uh, hopefully they didn't pull it, Love, Death, and Robots. I think if that's a like, pretty popular one. If you like Black Mirror, that is right up your alley. It is animated. And the one with the wolf might kind of turn you off. But the rest are awesome. If you liked uh, Sturgill Simpson, you'll like this. The animation's kind of all over the board. The very first one, absolute favorite. I'm not hearing anything about the plot. Can you give me a synopsis without, you know, spoilers? That, that's the thing is that each episode is its own plot. And so oh, the, so it's the like very a, first uh... one is a post-apocalyptic world with robots and they just kind of go on like a little sightseeing vacation i got you it's one of the it's one of those one-offs where they exactly yeah i like that storytelling i love black mirror and how they did everything really kind of depressing though watching black mirror because all of it's like this fantastical technology and this like weird utopias that at the end of the day, it's just like really flipping Doesn't it depressing. make you feel, as an IT professional, doesn't it make you feel like, oh, is this me? Let's get those brain chips implanted. I don't know that I want a brain chip. Well, no, I have thought about that. So, Depends about the, on the testing. So I guess going, going nerdy here. So did you ever play Deus Ex? No, never. So Deus Ex, those of you that don't know, is a game where you play a security chief. You get blown up. You get put back together. You are now a cyborg. But in this world, there's brain augmentation where they put computer chips into your brain and it speeds up your mental processing. And one of the social issues the game tackles is should people that have a computer for a brain be paid the same as people who don't? If I can do the work twice as fast, more accurately than other people, should I not be paid better? Should I not be paid more? Do the people who have a computer for a brain, are they still people? Like, do they have... Like in this in this world, do they have the same thoughts? Yeah, they're all they're all cybernetic. They're just enhanced. These are augments. That's not something I've thought about replacement. with for for those Trekkies out there. You know, Data on the Enterprise, he's one hundred percent 
positronic brain. There's no, um, you know, he's, he wasn't a human at one point. He is an android. And my thought is, do they pay him? <laughs> is he like, is it like, I mean, he has quarters in the show. So like he has his own living space and everything, but do they pay him? Well, I, or is it the, just... Here's the thing you need to remember about Star Trek. There is no money. They've transcended it. The Federation oh, operates right. completely in a utopian society. You work You're right. to survive, basically. And that's why space exploration has proliferated. Space travel became what it is because humanity's no longer locked down to just doing the job. There's robots for that. Which is nice, but it's never going to happen. I, I, mean, you know, I say it's never, never going to happen, but I should just say there's big hurdles to, to overcome. Because like right now, you know, we see this surge in automation. And that's going to take away jobs. Here's my whole concept here. And this might get me placed on a list. So, uh, hi, <laughs> I'm not a terrorist. Do I need to tune out of the button? Do I need to just log out real quick? J just mute me from now on, right? <laughs> so, everything that I said here is no longer, yeah. No, so, I always wondered about this. So, in computers, of course, we've got a server and a client. That's the simplest way of saying it. There's the side that they control and the side that you as a user control. With a credit card, that is your token. That is your access to your information on the server. No matter what the client is that you plug that card into, that is your key to open the door to your money. What is stopping anybody from creating a server that says, yes, there are funds here, and just kind of dummy ma masks all the transactions and says, here you go, money for everybody. I think that it's a lot more complex than you're leading on as far as like it, it the, might be. The I'm not a finance guy. No, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and say throw the might out the window. It definitely is because, the, okay, so like you said, you have your card that you put into the, the card reader and it says, oh, okay, this person is authorized to, uh, you know, use this. But I think there's a lot of like registers, uh, you know, there's protocols that are used to, right, right, right. to what's conduct stopping, these transactions. What's stopping you and I from going and buying a server rack? Here. Here's what's stopping you. And putting some sort of mad loop around the world where it's like mirrored to a bunch of different servers. Here's what's stopping you right here. Okay. There's a couple okay. of things that come to mind instantly. Okay. I'm sure there's a billion school, more. School but, me and the rest of our let me, audience. Let me school you here. <laughs> Here's what I think of that's stopping you. The first thing you say, let's go buy a server rack. Sure, whatever. We'll get it all set up. Let's assume that we even get the environment set up properly to conduct these transactions. We can't just say, oh yeah, we have the money. We have to prove to the federal, you know, government that yeah, we have this money. I, we might get away with what it for mean? a little bit. No, what no, do you listen, mean? We listen, have listen, to listen, prove listen, it to listen. them. Listen, we might get away with it for a little bit, but then when the bill comes due, they're going to. Oh, like, you mean the IRS and taxes? No, I mean like you know the the Federal Reserve and you know the. What do you mean? How are they? Are, why are they coming to us? They're what, going to that server. Mean? We burn the bridge to that server. There's no way we could effectively burn the bridge to the server. And then, and then the other thing is, there's. I don't think that we could even get that server set up and aligned with the proper registries. That you know, all I, I guarantee that anybody who is allowed to conduct transactions, you know, because what do you do? Use Mastercard, Visa, Amex. Anybody who's authorized to use those, I guarantee they have to complete some sort of you know, like registration process, some sort of membership type thing. I'm just, I'm saying that. There's saying, gotta be plan, there's gotta be a guy that works IT happen. setting up visas. What do you call it? Their their setup. If I am, I think your plan is like if I am like super saying, far off base, I want somebody to tell us because I'm I feel you like right now. I'm I'm feeling like yes, it is going to be difficult to set it up. But what I'm saying is you need a team. you are a lot you are a lot closer than you think to having unlimited funds i don't think you are you know what? I think, all they're saying yeah, is on, that yeah on. we've got the money they don't let me give you let me give you a metaphor first of all they say we've got the money but they do have the money they don't though they they've got registers they've got papers that just say they they were given this right. money that they weren't physically given there is no like physical reserve but of cash they can anywhere prove it. they can prove that they had this money where we can't and you know i bet it would take all five minutes before some red flag goes up and says, <laughs> I'm saying you go across like a VPN and yeah, there's, there's tons of setup that I'm talking about, but there's not like some guy that's just sitting there in your house being like, you know, tapping his foot. Like you're not a bank. <laughs> like, yeah, but at the second, the second you communicate with MasterCard, I guarantee MasterCard sends that info to the FBI or, or something, you know, I, I guarantee that the red flags come up instantly. You know what though? I encourage you. <laughs> 
I no, 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 this listeners. is just a let me, theoretical let me just thought say experiment. That we encourage our listeners to not take any advice from Casey, but I encourage you to try this out <laughs> and tell me how far you get. I feel like I feel like Dude, you, I won't even get, get to get the, the point server. of like looking this up because I don't even know where to begin with that. Like, say you've got the server and the server. I feel like the second you start install, installing whatever software you need and, and setting up and start making calls to their APIs, the first API call, the FBI just shows it. Like like you you hit the you hit the button you hit. The enter key as a test, you're, you're in the development process, you're posting something to their API, and then bam, the FBI just kicks the door open right then. I don't think it'd be the FBI. Who is it then? Is it the... Uh, Probably the IRS or the uh, FDIC, right? They just... Oh man, IRS, that'd be terrifying. You're being audited. God, kick the door open. <laughs> I, Casey, I think that's... Uh, we're coming up here on the end. Yeah, we're uh, getting right up against it, so I think this is as good time as any as to cut it so now i just want to thank you guys for giving us a chance here today if you did enjoy the content or listening to our voices awesome thank you leave us a review on whatever you're streaming us from itunes uh google podcasts all those fun things spotify. if you have <laughs> spotify amazon they now have podcasts if you have any suggestions or you want to give us a, a comment a word of encouragement send us gifts we accept them Please email us at theboys at brosinboxers.com. Again, that's theboys at brosinboxers.com. We'll try to get to everything we get. And if not, we appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's hate mail, we're definitely not going to respond to it. Oh, no. If it's hate mail, we won't respond, but we will read it on air. Tears in our eyes. Oh, my goodness. Yes, we'll do that. <laughs>